The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Min Liu. I'm from NAFA Engineering Service Center in Port Ulimi, California. Today's talk is about how we pick up the risk acceptance criteria when we deal with the ex existing structures. And just the uh, last concrete was the target reliability when we, you know, it's an open issue. This one, I tried to pick up. I didn't know the conclusion for that one, but uh, it happened. Um, it's, I understand it's a very controversial topic. People have a different opinion, and we, we go from, the first one is to look at what's the current code requirement about the existing structure, and what's the risk measurement in, in the current code, and the target uh, criteria okay. um, proposed the method which is very academic, not practical, but there is the last one, the ASC survey I did a couple years ago, see what practical people, uh, engineer doing in relate, related to how you set up the risk asset. That's probably interesting. And then come from summary. Okay, current code requirement for existing concrete structures, so far, existing structure as IEBC since 2003, IBC, Chapter 34 is talk about existing structure, and uh, NFPA 5000, that, that's why we never use it, but uh, it's there. Um, the local existing building code, like California building code, uh, the ACI 318, chapter 20, is talk about the existing structure, how to do the load testing. And the new published, the ACI 562, is talk about repairs. And for the seismic, a lot of papers and literature you can find. And uh, AC7, Appendix 11B, has a one page, very simple things, deal with exactly for the seismic only. And uh, ASC41 is come from, it's very comprehensive, very detailed, come from all the way back to 1987, ATC14 report, and go to the FEMA 310, all come up to the is SC 31, 34, and uh, 41, and combine them together. RP8 is a recommended practice for the seismic retrofit for the federal owned and the leased property. The difference one is RP8 has a, the trigger has one enemy is the cost. If you retrofit, the cost is 30% less than the whole replacement task, you don't have to satisfy today's code. You just do it. And the UFC, Unified facility criteria, which is used by DOD, Department of Defense. Uh, I'm working with Levy, so I'm using that one. The reference IBC code and the ASCE 41. And other national uh, code about seismic, very pub many publication. Any action along, applied to the existing structure will be categorized addition, alteration, and the changing use and the repair. You look at the code, they all do this. The criteria, the trigger for the addition, alteration will be almost the same, you can see from, from now. And uh, basically, IBC, S, ACI 560 have the same criteria, you can see. Gravity load, when you compare the original load, you have 5% increase, you gotta go to as, do as a new structure, which is very strict. And you have the decrease your capacity because of your addition or alteration, you have to go with new structure or gravity load. For lateral load, wind no seismic, they don't do the individual, they do the DOC. Uh, demand uh, capacity ratio, if a 10% increase, go to the new structure. ASC 716 does uh, a different 
the, they deal with the seismic load, which is lateral. They, are, they can allow 10% increase or 10% decrease. This is a different trigger to do, use the origin code or the run. For the change in use, you, you change your use to the higher occupied or risk uh, uh, category. You only need to uh, satisfy the seismic requirement for that. For the repair, you have the IBC chapter 34 has the substantial structure damage, which is defined as you have the capacity decrease over one third, 33%. You repair it as a new structures. Otherwise, you can repair to the pre damage direct state, it will be okay. And ACI 318, basic ACI 349, which is nuclear related concrete, AC, uh, 350, environmental. Engineer concrete all have the, the same chapter 20 based on the 318. They say the trigger is any doubt you have the structure safety and required by the engineer or building official, you should do the structure evaluation or load testing. For the actual of bending moment, the fracture uh, failure mode, if we have concern that, you can do it on paper because it will use the, the, the field data. If you have a doubt on the shear or bound distance, you have to do the load, uh, load testing. Because we believe we have a much better knowledge than fracture extra behavior than the shear or bounding. Because even the formula, it says uh, 318 is not uh, reliable. When you deal with deteriorated structure, you need to do a periodic testing. You did one testing, maybe like five years later, you have to do some kind of thing. Okay, based on the, what's the safety margin probably fa failure inside this code based on the ACI 562? I did a, a little a brief comparison with the new one. For the repair for the unsafe condition, which is the definition over there, they allow to use the current code with the fee factors based, based on the 562, which is a 10% or something increase than the ACI 318 and the current load, they also allowed 50% over. If do, if on this limit, you can, you know, repair as user origin code. If low, if over, you have to do uh, with the new, definitely that your safe margin will be less than save, uh, the new structure. For the substantial, because after you have something you have to do with the new structure will be the equivalent. There's another, um, the criteria, they use the current nominal load in the original code with a combination to factor with the current code, which is, uh, I don't think, recommended by the ASC 7, the commentary 1.1. Particularly, say, if we use the fee value, we have to go with the load combination or the factor. They come together because they come from load calibration based on the reliability series. And for the diffraction side, they require use a new load, meet the old code, in, our, in my opinion, is really strange and uh, new. This is a fragility curve to relate it was a D over C, you would probably fail. Okay, if you look at, if the, for the bending moment failure is 10% over, people don't think there will be yield. If over the 25%, 100% a year. If that was the, your, your enforcement is based on its code, if slightly low, you go 1.1, people think there's a good 100%. For the share low failure mode, if you go to 1.1, they believe there's a 50% chance, 1.2 or 90% chance. This has been used by US Bureau of Recommendation on their best practice in risk analysis of existing concrete dam. I'm not saying what, this is a universal. This is what they're doing, how they develop them. But it's a good approach to develop that fragmentation curve when you try to see how much. This is the one way. Now, all the criteria is reliability because our current design code all reliability uh, based, no risk bit. The risk basis is probability failure times the consequence is another entire new element. This element in the code were addressed by the Category, category, occupied category, or research category. Basically, it's an important factor. That, that's addressed the risk very roughly, not the explicitly. 
Uh, HCI318, there's a few factors related to important of your member. What's that mean important of your member? Maybe you can cause the progressive collapse or something, you're, you're better. So now then we come back. How are we going to do the target risk acceptance criteria? It's surprisingly, it's really depend on what the existing, I mean, the, how safe is, is safe the, the structure. First is consequence. You know, what's the potential loss? Um, if higher, you come to higher, um, you have to set higher standards. And the cost for the retrofit, if not cost very much to you use a higher standard in general. Another component is the decision maker's attitude, risk attitude. You know, people, is, as a human being, they will take the risk. And the current code even used the expected loss. We can prove this is a risk neutral. Or different people, they want to gamble in, they take advantage because future loss may happen, may not. And some people are very conservative, like, okay, we want to follow the code. And also has a stakeholders' perceptions and public opinion. This is the last slide I did uh, for the SE, uh, SEI risk committee. Talk about the loss of life. If you, because of the cancer, you, because of earthquake, people can the torrent risk, okay, acceptable and understandable. But when you got, like you drive a car, you die, um, people say, okay, when you look at the probability, you know that. But when you look at the government related, like a nuclear power plant, everybody against it. You have put a very much higher. It's not because of the structure, because people want to, we, we have to go that. And that's the, 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 the study you have to the human person. So when you look at the root cause of all this risk, if it re related, government related, involuntary activity, you have the smallest torrents. If you have the, like a EPC, this, you, can, you can increase a little bit. Now the ACS rate 18 does enhance the beta value, which is uh, for the, on the component level, the category is 3.5, and the uh, corresponding probability factor is 2.3 times 10 minus 4. For the existing concrete dam, if you just talk about the failure probability is 1.0 times 10 minus 4, which is uh, higher. Uh, lower the probability more safe than the regular building. But when you look at the potential loss of life, which is risk part, consequent loss of life, you go down, acceptable is uh, 10 minus 6. Between 10 minus 6, 10 minus 4 is uh, tolerable. We can't make a justification what we do. If you're larger than 10 min minus 4, you have to do something. By saying that risk, look at the daily life. Okay. Every, this is the, some real data and some year in the annual fatality in US because the uh, flash, because the tornado, this 500 people die. The population in this country is 500 million, so you divide anything, divide four, five hundred million, you got one minus 10. So people die because smoking, because of alcohol, because of the disease, even the motorcycle traffic. So by saying that, you die because of the the, the, the driving, the rate is much higher than you die by sitting here because the building collapsed. So, but still, we have very high standard in daily life, but, but still, we have to satisfy the public opinion, so we have to do this same. This is particular too for the existing building, because existing building, you, you, the cost related, you know, you have to, the new one, if you higher standard, the cost won't change increase very much. Except the, the, the decision is, should we retrofit? We don't retrofit. We still live there. This is kept the, the different facilities about uh, how we decide is, uh, is added for all the structure. Potential loss, if huge, or people like a nuclear pump, the Japan, the whole town is. And uh, for the buildings, small to medium, compared relatively. Probability of an event, PE, that could happen, really you could remote it, and the building kind of low, vehicle traffic or high, we consider it. PAR, people at the risk, how many people are affected, there's another root cause, public benefit, and another. 
This is all considered in, in, in this. This slide, and uh, I talk about when we reach the bar, we the standard, pick up the highest, and what really does that mean? If that fair is that we have a maximum loss, and we have the maximum acceptor loss, which means if we have a lower than we have 10% over, and the 1% we, we, we move, then we use the, the blue one, elect, uh, expect value to do our design. In reality, if something happened, it's still the, the pink line is the probability you could get lost. Doesn't mean you have a high standard, you are lost mean. In actually, it's it just probability is, that I want to clarify to people who thought, oh, I have a high standard, I should be not lost or less than that. that. That's not really true. Okay, this is very exactly what we're going to do. We realize it's multi-objective in this process, and we need a multi-party owner, government agents, insurance, and uh, tactical and risk, and uh, we need all the decision, all the pick up your, the criteria is compromise, we call it the best. It's not satisfied, not, not a single party. You have to compromise everything. We have many things, academic to do that. You need the first thing to set up a goal. What do you go? Do you want to save money? You are you want to earn the um, the public trust, particularly for the Department of Transportation when they deal with the bridge repair project, and you have a constraint. You have people opinion. Okay. Now we talk about really outside of the code requirement. So people here, engineer, will look at what's the code requirement. I mean, the code requirement. I'm okay, right? No. Okay. Let's look at the three years ago. I did a little bit of money for the. Survey to the ASE, SEI, Structural Engineering Institute to survey the people to what, well, how you do the risk criteria. It's very interesting. Is I have a building, people from building side, the bridges and the nuclear power plant dams are very low probability, high consequence tide. I categorize the high probability, low consequence side. You see, for the consulting PU, the practical the consulting side, people say, Oh, this, this is, uh, you can do the, based on the code specification, multiple party meeting, owner choice. And the academic professors look how the distribution. For the bridges, they go the, the, the code specification. And the nuclear power has to meet that, that people's opinion in reality. And the, the question is, the, can we do the fix, the criteria first, and do the risk analysis, or we can flexible. You change it later on, let's do the risk analysis and change the criteria later. 60% government engineers said we should fix first and we submit it, 40% no. And uh, for the consulting and uh, um, academic professors say 6% said we should adjust it. You know, not just fix it. It is very important. And another question is, uh, um, should we use the same criteria for the new structure or the existing structure, almost 100% say yes, but still have one third professor know why not? Why we have the difference? Existing you should be have the same criteria. And the last question and last question is, uh, can we use the historic data to do this pick up things? And the government and the professor to say yes, but pr practical, the consulting only 50% say we use the old historical data. This is the reality. This is how we're going for that. So by the, the, the summary conclusion, we have to look at the cost. We have to look at the historical data. We, by the end, multi-criteria decision making involve different party, different goal, objects, different party, different goal. They're competing most of the time, not just consistent with one time. This is your future, or oh, I mean, this is something. What we are doing now is perform-based. This is, should be the perform-based, and it should be included. And that's the end of my Thank you.